Hi, Timothy Ingrid here. A lot of people talk about Doom Emacs, but not as much talk as about Space Max, which is another Emacs uh, community configuration. So in this video, I thought I'd go through installing Space Max and take a first look at Space Max. Now, Space Max hasn't had a release in a few years, but if we go and search for Space Max uh, GitHub, and we go to the GitHub page here for Space Max, you can see that it was just updated three days ago. So it is still, it does still look like it's being actively maintained. So I'm going to go and click on install here. And basically what we're going to need to do is we're going to go open a terminal and we're going to clone their configuration into the .emacs.d directory. That's uh, where you configure Emacs. So it's just going to take their configuration and put it in there. All right, so I'm going to copy this. And um, let's just uh, open up a terminal here. OK, so now I'm just going to paste this in and hit Enter and let it do its thing. All right, so it's cloned that into the .emacs.d directory. So taking their configuration, put it there. I'm going to close out my terminal now and let's open up Emacs. OK, and now that Emacs is open, you see in the bottom here it says, what is your preferred editing style? So let's say among the stars aboard the evil flagship or on the planet Emacs in the holy <laughs> control tower. OK, so you can choose either one. I think this is somewhat based off of uh, running Emacs and Vim together. So I'm going to choose Vim for right now. So we'll do Vim and uh, hit Enter. Um, so what distribution of Space Max would you like to start with? Uh, standard distribution, which is recommended, or a minimalist distribution that you can build on. So either Space Max or Space Max Base. I'm going to just go with the recommended, which is Space Max. And it's going to go ahead, and uh, you can see it's going to Melpa right now and downloading some of the packages. So I'll pause the video and come back when it's done with that. Okay, it looks like it ran through and installed all the packages. I did get a few warnings here. I'm just going to close this out and then let's reopen it and see where it's going here. Okay, and it's still installing some packages, so this may take a moment. Okay, so now it's giving me that Space Max is ready, uh, but it can't find the specified font source code pro. Uh, so that's okay. So let's go here and let's just Google Source Code Pro, Google Fonts, and click on that. And uh, so we'll, we'll get that font. So I'm just going to go for the regular 400 here. Uh, let's make sure I don't have anything in here. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, so we'll go and select this style. I'm going to open up the side panel here and show you. Download all, okay, and show in folder here. And I'm going to go into this zip file. I'm just going to copy this with Control C. Now I'm running a Chromebook, so I'm going to go to my Linux files, show my hidden files, and we're going to have to put that in a dot local. So let me open up a terminal here because I just need to make that. So. I'm going to do mkdir-p, so that's going to allow me to make directories within directories. So I'm going to make a directory called .local. Within that, I'm going to have a directory called share, and then within that, I'm going to have a directory called fonts. Okay, now I can close that out, and you'll see that this appeared. So I'm just going to just go into here. Now, with Google, the latest update, they won't let me make the dot .file dot .directories, um, so I have to do it with the terminal. Okay, so I'm just going to paste that in there, and let's see, did I totally shut down? Pull this back up, close this out here, 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, close this out and then reopen. Let's see. So uh, it's only giving me the warning package CL is deprecated. That's something with 27.1. Um, it does give that warning. Okay, let's maximize this. Now, you, I have checked this out before. You can maximize it um, in your configuration settings. Maybe I'll take a look at that near the end of the video. But uh, so it just pops up maximized from the start. Um, let's do Control X, Control Shift Plus. There we go. Okay, so we can make this bigger now. We can start to take a look at this. Now let's do, let's just create uh, a test file. So I'm just going to take a first look here. So I'm going to do Control X, Control F uh, for find file. And let's create a file called index.html. Okay, and we'll just make an HTML file. And uh, it says, suggest support for web mode installation of HTML. Do you want to install it? Yes. So I want to install web mode. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and install web mode and install a few packages there. So that's cool. Uh, and it's setting it up for you. So, oh, and it's installing the company plugin, which is an autocomplete as well. So that's interesting. Uh, we're doing company at web. So this is interesting to try this out. I've used web mode before, but uh, I haven't used a lot of these other ones. We have council. Oh, Emmet mode. Okay, nice. Uh, Helm CSS. I haven't really done much with Helm. In patient mode. I don't even know what that is. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Prettier. Okay. Um, so I may need to actually, I don't have, think I have node set up on this one. So I may need to set up node to get some of this stuff to work. But right now it's just first impressions. So uh, let's see. Oh, okay. And yeah, snip it. All right. Um, okay, let's, uh, loading async done. So let's just, uh, do uh, control X one to get one window. And again, control X, uh, let's just make this a little bit larger. Okay. So we start off. Okay. Uh, starting off in Vim mode. Okay. So let's do, okay. So it's got Emmet mode installed. So that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Right out of the box. It's got Emmet mode installed. Uh, let's just pull this up here and see, is it saying web? It's not saying web. Oh, no, it says it here. Okay. So it is web mode. So let's do an H1. And then if I go to close it, it's got the, the auto closing of web mode. That is nice. Uh, so this is a sample HTML document. Okay. Um, let's go down here. You can do a paragraph again with Emmet. I'm, I'm liking this. This is nice. This is a very nice. Okay. Uh, so it configures it for, you know, so I wanted to create an HTML document. It configures it uh, for you so that, you know, you can quickly develop an HTML document right out of the box. This is very nice. Uh, they do the default uh, indenting is four spaces, which is interesting because uh, Emacs 27.1 and HTML plus mode is two spaces. I kind of like the four spaces one just because it's consistent with my hosting company. Um, they have their editors online are all set for four spaces. I'm sure I could adjust it, but just to kind of, you know, keep from, okay, this is what I'm doing offline to, okay, I'm going to put my website online and work on it on their little editor. If I have to make a little quick change, it, it's nice. Okay. Um, to keep that consistency. All right. So, so we've got a paragraph here. Okay. You know, typical stuff. All right. Uh, so let's see, let's do U L L I. Okay. So we got that. Let's go. Uh, yank, yank 10 P. Okay. So we can, you know, typical Vim key bindings work. So we can make a, a great little, uh, HTML file very quickly. All right, let's create a CSS file. So control X, control F. Let's call it style.css. I'm not putting this in any kind of folder. Let's again, make the font a little bit larger. I'm sure you can probably adjust the initial font size in your um, settings. But anyway, so 
All right, so it's basically a traditional way of the font size, okay, of changing the font size in Emacs. So that's not changed. Let's see, so body, um, let's do, I don't know, let's do BGC. Okay, background color, that, that works well. Yep. Uh, let's do D3, 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 okay. Um, yeah, so uh, looks like we have Emmet abbreviations. Uh, let's do FS, what is that? Font style, okay, font style. Um, yeah, <laughs> that works. Um, so the Emmet abbreviations for CSS work. Uh, let's let's just see something because I want to see if we have some autocomplete here. So let's do a paragraph and let's start typing. Uh, so you know I have the traditional autocomplete with Emacs, but it doesn't look like it's suggesting anything for me. So I thought I saw some company stuff coming in, but um, anyway, so. Yeah, so it, it looks like a lot of the traditional Emacs key bindings still work along with evil mode. Let's see also if I can do Alt X and then toggle off evil mode. Okay, so okay, so now this yeah now now it's in regular uh, Emacs mode. So just like normal, you can toggle off evil evil mode. That's pretty nice. Um, Let's see if I can change the theme. Okay, and yeah, okay. We've got this. Now you, you may, may not like me for this, but I actually like the lighter themes. So let's do Space Max Light. Uh, yes, yes, we'll trust it. Okay, so that's the lighter theme. That may be a little bit bright for you, but. Um, and here's Dear Ed. And actually for the video, I'll, I'll go back to the other theme. So let's do Alt X, customize themes. Uh, we'll go back here and um, go back to Space Max Dark. Okay. Uh, yes, I want that to load. Okay. And let's do go back. And this is what Dear Ed looks like in Space Max. I think we have Tree Max. I'll have to explore that because I've usually used Dear Dear Ed. But I can go back. We have the file icons here, which is kind of nice. We've got a Bash RC icon, HTML5 icon. Um, I don't know if I saved the style at CSS. I might not have. So, all right. So we go back here and get back into our files. Just traditionally, like Emacs, uh, I can do probably Alt X and do Evil mode and just turn that back on so now it's in evil mode oh did my cursor can change cover color let's see so let's do evil mode here and we can select between the two uh no i guess it didn't so now this is back in emacs mode anyways uh yeah i think this is a nice little configuration um or not little but nice configuration set up um i'm going to explore this a bit more I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, you could please give it a like as it will help get out to more people. Uh, and I want to thank you for watching. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. It really does help the channel grow. Uh, so, again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.